I'll run quickly through this. I'll focus mostly on 2019, but I will give a little bit of an update of the organization in COVID and how we're doing. Um, I think the best way to describe this past year is, I don't want to gloat in a way, but Canadian Atheist, the blog, the editor of it in January named me person of the year for 2019, largely because of the work we had done as an association. Um, I think that shows the sign of what we were able to accomplish in 2019. So that comes down to a bunch of wins on our campaigns, things like um, moving forward on property tax exemptions. I'll talk a little bit about what's coming up on that. But in the last year, we saw a number of municipalities really start to change their policies. One was Saanich, which was probably somewhat influenced by Teal, who lives there. Um, as these municipalities start to look at public benefits tests, so they start to ask religious organizations whether uh, they provide a benefit to the organization bef before to the city before they get uh, their taxes waived. Um, we will have a major report coming on that with much more detail, uh, and that'll be in line with what we accomplished with the House of Prayers report. That was finished in September, right as my baby was being born, and I went on parental leave for eight weeks. Uh, but that was an incredible project, largely led by Teal coming to me and saying, I want to do something about prayers in the legislature. And I was able to say yes, which was good. Uh, we got 57 volunteers to transcribe 871 prayers that had been said in the legislature over 16 years. Uh, Canada Summer Jobs came through and allowed us to hire Renil, who's on the call, and Noah over last summer. And they coded, they read each of those prayers, each of them, uh, and coded them against a number of statistics. Uh, Katie helped a ton in doing the statistics on that and Teal really wrote it all up and brought it all together and it was a team effort in writing uh, especially because we pushed that report out in early September because we found out the speaker was doing a review of these prayers after they'd kind of got wind that we were sniffing around this they went it probably is time to update this and we said well we'll give you a bunch of information to think about and as we launched that report we launched an email tool where we had over 500 people uh, email their MPs across the province asking for an end to prayers in the legislature. Uh, we sort of won in November at the end of session when the House leaders all agreed to change it from prayers to prayers and reflections. So it is a slightly more inclusive uh, start to every day in the legislature, but we'll have to actually see. We're gonna get our summer students this summer to do a bit of an update and look at how it's changed since then. And, you know, we'll keep watching that. Uh, another big win was Byron Wood, who we've been following for a while. He was the Vancouver Coastal Health nurse who lost his job after disclosing he had a substance use issue and would refuse, and he had refused to take 12 step programs. He wanted something that was purely secular and evidence based, and he was denied that option. Uh, his human rights complaint didn't quite make it to a hearing. Uh, I guess he was informed that facts might not have been as strong as he'd hoped, but he was able to secure a settlement where Vancouver Coastal Health agreed that future healthcare professionals will have access to secular addictions treatment, which is a big win. And we're starting to see other health regions adopt similar policies. Uh, with Center for Inquiry Canada, we worked together to release a report on the cost of religion, specifically looking at how much revenue Canada and the provinces have foregone by providing charities, uh, religious charities with charitable tax status. Uh, and it's about $2.6 billion. Now, some of those charities might qualify under, it's up to 2.6. Some of those charities might qualify under other exemptions. Perhaps they provide uh, food banks or things, but it kind of shows that this isn't chump change we're talking about. Uh, we did a bunch of other, submissions on budget 2020 in the province we, where we called for an end of funding of public uh, end of public funding of private schools uh, the board took a very clear stance on bill 21 that I thought was uh, it definitely got noticed I keep getting emails from random um, atheists and anti-theists in Quebec in particular who ask us why we took that stance but I've been able to say that that's the stance this organization has taken uh, we also did more petitioning for humanist marriage and got signatures in person, uh, both in Vancouver, in Kelowna, across the province and provided those to the province. Unfortunately, they're still dragging their heels. 
uh, and we supported efforts to ban conversion therapy in BC. The Green Party did bring forward a bill, but the NDP said it, or the government said it was the federal government's responsibility. Luckily, the federal government has tabled a bill. Unfortunately, COVID kind of put that bill on hiatus, and we'll be working over this summer to try to push them to pass that ban. On the program side, Dan's talked about the Sunday meetings and stuff happening here in Vancouver. We've also had the book clubs have continued to meet. Uh, we launched the Queer Humanist Alliance last summer, which was really exciting and managed to do well uh, for a few months. It got quiet uh, in the new year and then with COVID has not really been super active, but we're hoping to get that uh, going again. We have good local groups meet, meeting still in Kelowna and Victoria, our allies there who are both independent and partnered with us. Uh, unfortunately, the group that was meeting in Comox disbanded. They just did not have the capacity to keep going. Our membership over the last year went from about 200 members to currently 335, which is some fantastic growth. And I wanna keep seeing that growing. Our supporter database also continues to grow. Uh, we had in 2019, 350 individual people give us money, whether that was a donation or a membership. And 164 people in that list, our database tells me we're first time donors. So we're still getting a lot of new people coming to us to give us money. Uh, a few other things happened in the past year. Gary helped us uh, launch a strategic planning session. We had a great meeting at the end of the summer where we brought our summer students in and really started to want to think about how the organization would look longer term. Unfortunately, that work took a stall with Gary's untimely death and then COVID-19. We've had to refocus a little bit, but I'm hoping the new board after this meeting will begin uh, looking forward to restarting that and hopefully engaging the wider membership. There was a question about our refugee project and I'll touch on that now. We haven't moved forward much on that. So we raised a number a of uh, around $25,000, $30,000 a few years ago. You'll recall we used that money to finally bring forward a refugee after a long arduous process of going through the paperwork, applying to Immigration Canada to sponsor a family. And after, and then our initial um, attempt had failed and then we managed to connect with a family that was able to come. Um, unfortunately, we had some struggles with volunteer capacity along that. Uh, the family is doing okay. I believe the woman just had her first child in Canada. She's had other children, which is really exciting. Um, but it was a taxing amount of work for our volunteers. So we still have money set aside. I'd be interested to hear, I think the board would be interested to hear from members in terms of what you think we should be able to, what we should do with that. We don't have quite enough to take on a sponsorship again, though we could fundraise a little bit more. Um, alternatively, we could dedicate that money to an, another organization that is working on sponsoring refugees to come to Canada. It is a very difficult process, though I will say. Uh, just to touch on COVID and looking ahead, honestly, a lot of organizations have struggled a lot through COVID-19. We have not been hit as hard. Uh, our fundraising hasn't taken a significant dip. Our memberships haven't taken a significant dip. And that's thanks to all of you and all of those who aren't on this call being awesome. Uh, we did see a bit of a lull in March and April. Uh, part of that was I did have to take a couple weeks of personal leave for um, family reasons. But despite that, we have largely turned that around and we are still a growing, thriving organization. We could always use more money, but we aren't hurting as much as many organizations out there. Uh, the biggest change for us has been to shift meetings to virtual and Dan talked a lot about that. Uh, I did. I have been trying to run more virtual and streaming programs. One of which was the most, or one of the more successful recently was uh, Corey Clay, a new member who's moving here from the States, gave us a talk about uh, criminal justice and racism from his perspective as a cr criminologist in the States. And that had another 30 people on it. And we've been able to release those on our YouTube channel, uh, put them on Facebook Live, and that's all been uh, quite a good step forward. So going forward into this summer, 
and I do see the questions lining up in the chat. Feel free to add them there and I'll address them in turn or we can, you can ask me after. Uh, into this summer, we have three interns coming on again. Canada Summer Jobs has been good to us once again. Uh, I can announce that our program slash marketing coordinator will be Emily Fagan. She's the most recent editor-in-chief of the Martlet at the University of Victoria. She gave us a very impressive resume. She did a very impressive um, interview. I have to say the candidates we had this year were overqualified, and Katie can speak to that as well because she was there with me on the interviews. It, I, maybe it's the effect of a really bad job market that we get really good people, but I guess it's our gain. So we're really looking forward to um, seeing what all of the summer students are able to do this year. Uh, the two people who will be working on research and campaigns uh, haven't accepted yet, so I can't announce their names. Uh, and the other big thing coming up this fall is I'll be taking six months of personal leave uh, for parental leave to look after my baby. So things will be uh, tough for the board to figure out how to patch fill that, but we're hoping that some of these uh, summer students or others can help come in and keep the organization going from success to success.